also creates. So it's a creation partnership or collaboration with the AI. And these are images that are from her portraits project. And I can put that link up. I just have to find it. No worries. Uh, yeah, so um, Maz has also, Maz has been working on uh, VR for a while. And uh, yes, I will put the link to the video uh, in the chat and on the Miro board. Um, and has has various works. And I think it's it's really important that we start to uh, recognize that a lot of what we're seeing now um, in terms of image uh, and illustration um, is is potentially AI generated and and in particular, uh, lots of artistic contexts, we're seeing a lot of of AI generated um, images. And um, it, it definitely brings a lot of these questions to the fore. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy to open the floor. We have uh, 20 minutes uh, to open the floor to discussion about this um, while I copy and paste links uh, and, and do things like that. So uh, feel free to turn on cameras and to unmute and to... Uh, throw some ideas and questions out there. Hi, Alan. Hi. <clears throat> um, I'm going through a, a personal crisis at the moment, which I don't know if you know about, but um, so I'm, I'm a little off kilter. Um, but one of the things I've noticed, uh, because I do a lot of my, I put a lot of my work up on Facebook and I don't want to sound, so overly stupid about it, but an awful lot of the AI work looks a lot alike. It looks very much like early 19, uh, early 20th century Art Nouveau kind of uh, materiality, and I hope that changes eventually. I've also noticed that people are becoming addicted to it because increasingly I'll see people who are working harder at work, making images or doing whatever they were doing, are now putting up like uh, sheaves of maybe 25 to 50 images. Uh, so it's when you look at when you look at the page, at least in my my AI, uh, my Facebook uh, pages, there's just one image after another that people people are doing it. And uh, I, I find there's something very problematic about that. Because it's also I feel uh, this is something I'm going to talk about in my thing that's coming up in a while. I don't know when, but hour maybe. But uh, it also takes things away from thinking, I, I feel, thinking about Ukraine and so forth. I think there's a retreat into a kind of fantasy world when I would rather see, just, then this is just personally, I would rather just see evidence of what's going on in the world rather than so much of this. And it does appear alike. And I assume that will change. I think eventually it will change. You'll be able to do anything in a style you can dream of or that hasn't been dreamt of. So that's. You're, you're muted. Yes. Uh, I think oh. that's it. I didn't want to have my typing uh, drowning you out. Um, I think that's a really important point. Uh, this this notion that that it it all looks very similar. Um, I think perhaps a lot of what gets posted may be similar, um, but there's definitely. I mean, there's obviously the bias of of what the the generators are using in terms of like stock photos and you know what's already available online i mean we know there's bias there and and there's limitations especially when we talk about people um there's been countless examples of the people only being uh white and and male and, and we talked about that a little bit yesterday um i think it's going to really start to differentiate um, I feel like the this I feel like we've seen the opening salvo. Um, and yeah, it's all gonna be very sim similar as the the AIs are, you know, haven't learned much yet and and we haven't learned how to how to use them um to a certain extent. But I feel like we're gonna see 
a lot more different things coming from them um and we're going to struggle to to distinguish them um and i think that's it, the fact that we we were questioning whether even the human faces were ai generated i think that's that's the start of it right for a long time the human faces that we we were struggling i remember to get human images from these ai generators that actually looked human and not like some um crazy creepy pasta um distorted um yeah they were they were a little bit scary for a long time um yeah. and now they're they're getting very realistic except for when you look at hands the ais can't handle hands yet well we're moving into a plane mm -hmm. which is which is kind of interesting because not only they're ai images but if you look at popular music with things like true tone which uh corrects singers and that popular music is also turning more and more towards large production values where the music isn't written by the singers and so forth, as opposed to say the 60s or 50s or 40s or 19th century. So we're we're getting we're getting in the stage where we're having culture delivered to us. And the problem with that for me is that representations real representations of i keep pointing this way all the time when i'm talking because that's the west side of providence that's the poor side it's people of color it's um, chinese cambodians blacks latinos just a whole mix of people and the poverty rate there is horrific and that needs more representation i think than this kind of plane and i think this kind of plane is eventually going to take off and dominate. And it relates, it relates to a book that uh, Sherry Turkle wrote that just came out a few years ago, where she's talking about that people in classrooms now, kids in classrooms, won't talk to each other directly in the classroom, but will talk through a phone to each other. So we're getting this layering, which is very frightening because it takes away from the flesh and it takes away from things that are going on in Ukraine to the point where now we can say that the stuff going on in Ukraine is imaginary or it's not what it seems to be or, you know, and there are people exploiting that kind of thing. So there's there are troubling political implications of this because it's going to dominate everything. You're not going to be able to tell eventually whether my brilliant Alan Sondheim can write a piece of philosophy or whether it's going to be something that uh, AI called jerk Sondheim you know, is producing in reams and reams and reams. And for all I know, that may be happening right now. So, you know, it's, it's a, but it's seriously, it's seriously troubling. I think, I mean, I'm just, I'm just going to counter for the sake of, of countering, um, perhaps. Um, but I think that, I mean, because what I found when I was doing my research on sort of how digital fiction has emerged across the world is that we continually do this. A, we continually create new technologies and and one, we worry that they're going to completely change how we communicate with each other and they're going to change art and they're going to change how we see each other in the world. But also we're right. They do change how we see each other and how they're changing. They're changing it in very problematic ways, leaving 99 percent of humanity behind. Agreed, but they always have. No, I this is, I think this is I'm different. Saying. I think this is different. I think this has to do with population increase. I think it has to do with global warming. These things are shuttled aside for a lot of people. And these things can't be shuttled aside at this point. You know, it's, you have exponential curves occurring uh, with this that started, I mean, that was known all the way back in the 60s. That, these things going off the charts. So it's not the same situation as say when book learning came along, uh, you know, when books came along or when television came along. It's, books, I think it's qualitatively changed different the world, and more. Didn't they? Pardon? Books absolutely change. Anything the changes the world. Wheels change the world. That's not the question. The question is what way is the world changing? And the way it's changing now is very problematic. You wouldn't have Trump in office if there wasn't something else going on. You wouldn't have Bolsonaro, uh, you know, so dangerous if it wasn't something else going on. And yeah, I don't think you would have Ukraine if it wasn't something else going on. It's it's a very troubling situation. 
It's not the same. It's not business as usual when you have enormous population increase and people not able to tell the difference between real and fiction, between a real body that's wounded and let's have fun and make splayed bodies out of uh, AI, which right now look fictional, obviously, but eventually they won't. Christine, that is a good point. But yeah, Sean. Something Siobhan, you... yeah. Um, still very much waking up here. Good morning, everyone. I mean, this is such an interesting and important discussion. And I think that like at the, the different ends of negative and positive impact, um, I think, Dina, your point here around, you know, sort of in effect that is creating what could be really pivotal sort of, you know, news material, but the fake news is huge, biases are huge. Question I would raise, which I'm trying to figure out is how to, how to create uh, more diverse representations of people without having to put in terms, like, can I train what I'm doing on mid-journey? So it just does that, as opposed to my having to direct it so I don't get default white. Um, and on the flip of that, like I think Dina, you mentioned how you're using it creatively. Um, as someone who is not a visual artist, I'm not gifted. I'm like, you know, a reasonably good photographer. Um, it's absolutely, uh, you know, it is absolutely generative in the way that it's it's sparking creative projects because I can craft images to to sort of intersect with the text that I want to use. So, you know, and that is also then balanced by another point that I think Dini you have in here, which is which is the kind of carbon cost of it, which I mean, how many users, how many images, how much uh, sort of, you know, sort of how much energy is this using? What's that CO2 impact? You know, we're probably all very aware of basically kind of like the uh, impact of crypto mm -hmm. um and at what point is this going to start hitting that level of just sort of computational um usage so i think there's so many points and i also keep thinking this is early days like this came up yesterday we're not even a year in to this being accessible so what's it going to be in a year from now it'll be utterly different a year from now and the problem isn't that, I mean, the images are beautiful. I don't want to say it's not, but there, there, there are political and social consequences of all of this. It's not, it's not the same as when photography came along and was a sort of fragile mirror of society of upper class society at first. And then Ache came along and did Paris, this kind of thing. It's a different, it's fundamentally different because it's playing havoc with our notions of what's real and it's allowing people to generate, I mean, if you look at QAnon as an example, which to us is patently absurd. You know, the all of the debates, are, you know, all of the backstories in QAnon are ridiculous, but it's taken hold and these things have consequences that we, that we overlook. And I, there's no way to stop it. I mean, I'll probably end up using that kind of AI in the first place. Uh, there's, there's no way to stop this, but I think the costs other than the energy costs, which are already brutal, but I think the costs are going to be very, very problematic in terms of human psyche. All the studies done recently of kids, for example, you know, uh, in primary school show they're a lot more unhappy than they used to be, that they're thinking much more about suicide than they used to be. They're having breakdowns. Well, I mean, we see this in, uh, here in Providence on the streets, uh, this kind of thing. So the, it's troubling. I, I have no answer. It's going to just continue this way. I've I have been worried before the oh, but Christine, yeah, but I've been worried. Say Christine and then Yeah. Hi, I I was just wondering whether, um. I mean, it seems to me that the uh, one way of, of counteracting the um, the dominance of AI and what I, I agree with what Alan's saying about it's very, very dangerous that, that we can't, um, you know, we lose the ability to be, be able to distinguish what's real and what's fantasy is, is maybe to maybe to move away from uh, the fully digital realm and actually get into the human connection 
again. And we can still use digital to help us make connections, but mm -hmm. it's, it's a bit like we're, when we see this new technology, we're very, very seduced by it. And as, you know, as an elite community, maybe, maybe we shouldn't be, we should, I mean, we're, we're critical, but we're still seduced. Maybe we should be resisting that seduction and trying to think uh, or, or develop different ways of, of working and making co human connections. And um, I mean, there's quite a lot of people in kind of the, the mental health and well-being space that are promoting, um, I mean, you know, things, things that are just coming to the top of my head, things like mindfulness and um, you know, downtime from social media and, and things like that. And it's certainly in Britain anyway, that's kind of becoming more um, uh, known about. It's becoming more familiar. And I just wonder whether we ought to do, uh, be focusing on, on that kind of thing creatively as well. I haven't, I have no idea what yet, but just a thought. Tegan? Hi, um, I was going to talk about pretty similar to Christine, and I think I, I kind of agree with Alan. It was something that, so I'll reveal a personal thing about me, which is I was chronically online as a teenager. And what Alan describes with rising rates of depression and anxiety, I think is very much tied to how online society is. But I think a lot more people are becoming aware of this now, especially with AI coming out, which is what gives me hope is we have, especially online at the moment in younger circles, the concept of chronically online is coming up more and more frequently. And I do think we have an issue as humanity as a whole of releasing technology into the general public with no prior testing, with no thinking of repercussions. And I do think the internet is one of those concepts where it was released with the best of intentions. And because it's been co-opted, I would say, by larger corporations, and I've seen a backlash against the corporate web, where it's been purposefully designed to be as addictive as possible. Like you have companies like Meta who've tested Facebook to the point where they know exactly what shade of red a notification needs to be in order to draw you in and it uses um, technology that activates the lizard brain where it's your base emotions that it's working on but I don't think it has to be quite as um, depressing I think people are becoming aware and they do know that in a way internet has eroded society and and there are some takes where people get so caught up on what's happening virtually that they don't know how to interact politically or reasonably in the real world so I think I just wanted to interject and say that I think there's a growing awareness of this happening and what is happening I know that there are practitioners who talk about ethical web design and are trying to move away from that so that was my two cents on the topic and I'll drop a link about chronically being online into the chat as well, so people can read about that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes to ethical web design. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, also, I'm just going. I'm going to add to this discussion. I think another aspect that's worth noting, which is uh, all of the stuff that I've generated with text uh, generators, which is you know just solely with Chat GPT. Um, is really generic like it's really hard to push it into something that's interesting and creative and is in any kind of like just trace way as interesting as what a human can do like you know it can it can generate competent coherent uh but really superficial and i've tried all kinds of sort of prompts around a kind of an imagined narrative and it really rarely sort of reaches anything that's of interest um, mid journey is once you figure out how to skew beyond like the kind of auto sets of what it's going to generate um, can be extraordinary and, and stuff that I haven't posted in any way yet sort of which is sort of forming material for other projects 
um, is really, really interesting. And it will introduce elements that, you know, have nothing to do with what I've input in there that are fascinating. So um, there's a distinction to be made, I think, in those two spaces, um, recognizing absolutely in the context of like the issues being raised here in terms of um, kind of, you know, how that then supports um, addictive usage. <laughs> Like, absolutely, I'm limiting my time. I don't know about anyone else, but like, yep, I'm not allowed to use it in certain windows and I don't touch it, you know, when I've got other stuff going on. But um, there there are, I think, qualitative and kind of output differences between these, these uh, sort of tools at this point. Yeah, give it two or three more years and I don't think there'll be tools. Sure, yeah. You yeah. know, because it's it's moving so fast. And so out of, I don't want to say out of control because it's obviously in the control of humans, uh, but it's moving so fast, it's it's not going to be recognizable, I think. And I am brought to you by Facebook. Bap, bap. <laughs> <laughs> Glitch. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're going to bring back my, my cough. Oh. <laughs> Goodness. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think these are, I think they're really interesting points. And I think that it's, it's interesting times in which we live in that we're getting to see all of this happen. And I, I don't know that getting to see all of it happen is perhaps the right phrase or um, surviving through it, perhaps, um, hopefully. Uh, you know, everything is happening very, very quickly. I think, you know, from climate change to population growth to technology, advan technological advancements, um, it's it's quicker than we can keep up with. And I think perhaps that is the, the key element that that we're struggling with. Um, Interestingly, same with same with things like COVID. Mm -hmm. Which is just spreading and spreading and mutating at such a high rate of speed. So right now it's a lull for us, but it may not be for much longer. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so welcome to the world in hyperdrive. Um, thank you to everyone. This has been a fascinating discussion and um, really great stuff. We knew VR and AI were going to be hot topics. Uh, and and I think that um, we've, we've shown that we all have various interests and, and takes on them and, and lots of food for thought. And I really encourage uh, everyone to continue these discussions on Discord uh, and on the Miro board. We've tried to put all the links and resources and articles onto the Miro board so that it is um, preserved for everyone. And obviously all of the discussion and everything has been recorded. I'm gonna stop that recording now.